take a deep breath with me in through the nose and out through the mouth as we enter into the space that we call pure being, pure love, pure imagination. And in this sacred space, we give thanks for the presence of God, for the presence of good, knowing that it is not by might nor by power, but by our spirit that things are done. We surrender to the mind of God, knowing that unity of birth, Birmingham is a perfect idea held in place by the mind of God, that all is well and that all is in divine order. We speak blessings on those that are here and those that are on the way here. We affirm that Monday through Saturday ahead of us is blessed, and we allow the presence of God to speak to us through music, through song, and through love, and through laughter, and through the message so that all that hear might hear what the Spirit says into the church on this Pentecost Sunday. It is in the name and the nature of all that is holy. We declare that we are blessed and prosperous, and so it is. Amen. Good morning, spiritual family. Welcome to this holy ground that is unity. Whether you're here in person or joining us online, thank you for being present in this moment to create this uh, very wonderful spiritual community. As we settle in for a time of meditation, you may want to lay aside things from your lap and plant yourself comfortably in your seat your spine erect, and your feet flat, we're going to start by uh, doing an affirmation aloud <coughs> together. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Suffering is always optional. Suffering is always optional. Once again, together, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Suffering is always optional. Now let us silently affirm the same affirmation as you gently close your eyes. Let's get centered in our bodies and in the present moment by taking a few cleansing breaths together. Breathing in the presence of God and the fullness of joy. Breathing out, let this joy go from us into the world around us. Taking another holy breath in. And breathe out. Now breathing in a smile that washes over your whole body. Breathing out, transmitting that smile to the world. Now breathing normally. Just relax deeper. <clears throat> with each exhale. Whole body. Pay attention to the weight of your body at all points of connection with the chair and the floor supporting us. Become aware of the rise and fall of your chest with each cycle of breath. And the sounds around us. We accept the sounds. We smile as we remember that joy is the highest vibration 
through the omnipresence of God, we are always swimming in a high vibrational field of joy. Whenever we're out of alignment with it, we can make a simple shift of awareness back to God, remembering our true essence, which puts us right back on the beam. New Thought teacher Joel S. Goldsmith called it practicing the presence. Reverend Michael Beckwith calls it our divine spiritual stimulus package that begins with an awareness that we're sourced and fueled and funded by a renewable resource which is within us. It never runs out. It is our essence. It's our life. Created in the image and likeness of God, joy is our nature. The joy that is our essence did come from the world, so the world cannot rob us of it. As radiant lights of God, we shine as a natural way of being, living as the joy we are, living as joy, we are stress-free, we are blissful, and we are well. We welcome a deeper relationship with our naturally joyful nature. We thank God for its omnipresence and availability at all times to express through us, as us, pure joy and genius. Let us sit with this awareness and a gentle smile for a few moments in the silence. moment. We are awake to the life that is everywhere, the love that is everywhere, and the joy that is everywhere, and to the knowing that there is no separation. Namaste, y'all. Thank you for that beautiful meditation. Last Sunday, we talked about reflecting on precious moments. And I was blessed this morning to hear that that song actually spoke to someone's heart. I hope this morning that this one does as well. We're going to sing Celebrate Life. It's a little bit more joyous, <laughs> right? So if you guys want to sway with me, I'm going to try to sway. And we can just sway together and just get in the moment called Celebrate Life. Thank you. 
bringing conversations in different languages that you know not of. Know in this moment that the presence of God within you will give you the interpretation. The glossolalia that you feel within your heart in this moment, in this service, on this week, all things will be made known unto you. All things will be revealed. The sweet spirit that is both in you, with you, as your deepest self will bring all things to your remembrance. Connections will be made. Aha moments will happen, both from the past and the present. Because now is the only time there is. We allow this service to be the grounding point from where deep communication flows between you and God, you and the world, knowing that everywhere you go, God is and all is well. Because you carry God with you. You carry goodness with you. And if the title God is too triggering, you carry love with you. No matter what happens, no matter what you hear or experience or what people tell you, your true name is love. So on this Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate life for its fluidity, for its openness and affirming knowing that for as much as we do that might seem off or wrong or as a misstep, there's no errors in God, no mistakes. We don't need to undo the past because even the past is in divine order. Because in this space you've awakened, you've woken up to who you really are. If you will, take one big deep breath with me into the nose Release the divine sound of ah. Utilizing your powers of elimination to let everything go, knowing when you let go, God within gets more room, more breathing space in your life, and more room to celebrate. If you will, rub your hands together. Let's send this loving energy to those that are watching online. If you will, point at the camera, say this with me. Divine love, divine love. in us, yes. blesses and multiplies Bless all that you hear, all that you receive. Know in this moment, you are loved, you are safe, and your life is in divine order. And so it is. Our ministry is supported by partners like you. Remember to log on to unitybham.org and click on giving. Moderators are on standby before, during, and after the service. So if you do have a prayer request, please post it in the chat box below, wherever you see this message, on Facebook, our website, or on YouTube. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And for those of us that are in the house, if you are a new member, I just want to tell you on behalf of the entire community, we love you, we see you, we bless you. If you will, put your hands together for yourself and our new members. Sounds like a television show when you listen to it from the other side. That commercial thing is a trip, ain't it? <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. And I have to tell you, there is no script. I got a text message the other day, and they were wondering if there was a teleprompter behind the camera. And it's like, no, I'm a millennial who grew up off of PBS television, so I know how to solicit donations. <laughs> Ah, it's good to laugh, right? Laughter opens us up. It opens us up to the celebration of life. And so to piggyback off of the music and the swaying and the looseness and the meditation that we feel this morning, don't y'all feel good? I feel good. And y'all are doing that thing again, too. Everybody's sitting near the sun. We're so creatures of habit, you know? And it's a beautiful thing. This is your unconscious showing you to lean towards the sun. So if you don't remember anything I say this morning on this wonderful Pentecost Sunday as we delve deeper into our theme of inner work, remember to lean towards the sun. It doesn't matter what you go through. It's important, but it doesn't really matter the grand scheme of things. The stuff that you hear, the negativity that you experience, lean towards the sun. Don't lean towards the clouds because they pass. Don't lean towards the negativity. Don't lean towards the inner work that you feel you should be doing but have not yet done. Because there's always stuff to do. And in this message, I want you to really, really hear that you are okay. When we say that, when you hear that in pop psychology, and you hear that in the world, and you hear that in spiritual messages, what they mean is your original, your, your, your divine self, you're okay as you are. 
Who's gone through stuff before in their life? Everybody's laughing if you can't hear it behind the camera. Just to let you know you're in good company. We've all been scratched and bruised and burned and burnt before. And so if you lean towards the sun, it will show you the source of life. Our sources aren't people, although they are good, good support bases. But when you lean towards the sun, you can celebrate the totality of life because when you see things that show up in your experience that are not right, they're slightly off, oh, why am I experiencing this? Why am I going through this? When you lean towards the sun, you get the truth. The stuff that shows up in the external world, it's facts. It's people hurting, it's people in pain, it's people suffering. But behind the hurt, behind the pain, there's an inner child. And if you missed last week's message, please tune into our last week's service where we talked about that inner child. But behind all of that is a golden sun within our hearts. If you would place one hand on your heart center. Divine love, or John, according to the Fillmore teachings, if you lean towards the heart, lean towards the sun, you can see the goodness in people. And I know it can be tough because sometimes all we see is what's in front of us. It's like, I got to adjust my glasses for this, bro. I wasn't prepared for all this foolishness in my life. <laughs> but if you look behind that, there's a small child saying, love me. There's a baby crying through all of that madness saying, mom, dad, please pick me up. Don't let me cry it out. Mom, dad, please change my diaper. And it's a good tool, you can put your hand down. Because the next time you see foolishness, that's just a child. <laughs> this is a child in front of me begging for love. And we all need it, right? We all need to be reminded every day that we are divine love, which is why we do this spiritual work. So again, when we lean towards the sun, we lean towards goodness, we lean towards love. It doesn't make us airy fairy people. They can call us hippies, that's okay. We have the most fun anyway. And everybody listens to our music, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> they can call us what they want to call us. But leaning in that direction, it makes everything make sense. And then you see the entirety of life as a formative experience. Because, say this affirmation with me, all things, all things work, together work together for my good. For my good. That's the good the bad, the uncomfortable, the things that, oh, I'm not sure about this. That's all of it. And all things can't work together for your good if you don't lean towards the sun and let the sun shine on all things. Those parts that you want to see, those parts you want to talk about, don't want to talk about the things that make you feel comfortable. Let the sun shine on all of that because the sun isn't going to damage it. People might damage it because they don't know how quite to focus their light, but the true source within, if you lean towards that, you can lean external wherever you see it, wherever you see rays of sunshine. In fact, take a look around the room to use Michael Beckwith and see who's swimming with us today. You're all seeing balls and balls of light. Lean towards your community. Lean on your community. If you're listening online, don't be out there by yourself. Find a community, whether online or in person. I prefer you to be in person because I'm a pastor, but that's me. <laughs> but lean in towards the sun, and I promise you, things will get better. So today's topic, <laughs> after all of that, is spiritual formation. Say this with me, spiritual formation. Spiritual formation. And spiritual formation came to me as I was intuiting what God wanted to really say to all of us, including myself. And I was reminded that all things do work together for our good, and that formation doesn't just happen at one time. Uh, to quote from uh, the Old Testament story, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and ordained you a prophet. And you can substitute that name for your name or whatever name you feel comfortable with addressing the story by. And what that means is the presence of God within is always moving, always shifting, always forming. And when, and we have the right to do so because we're conscious agents, you can decide what parts of God you want God to have. Everybody know what I'm talking about? I'm not ready for this yet. Let me just do this. I'll stick my hand in it. But sometimes you got to just dive in head first. Maybe that's just me. That's my ADHD talking. You just jump right in. Because here's the thing. Even when you jump right in, You'd be surprised the parts of you that actually get wet. While we're trying to protect our arm, the water touches our feet first. We're trying to protect our head, the water touches our heart first. Come on, somebody. 
And what I mean by that allegorically is when you surrender to the presence of God within, the presence of divine love, this message that we keep talking about, the parts of you that you're trying to protect and don't want the light to shine in on, God understands that too. God is not going to embarrass you or make you feel ashamed or pull out all of your dirty little secrets and then everybody knows. But what will happen is you'll find more relief because sometimes the pain happens because we've been holding on to it too tight. And so you let go. If you will, take a deep breath. This is what the Pentecost experience is about. It's about breathing. And the mystery of that story, if you remember from the uh, book of Acts, was that everybody heard the message that the Christ was teaching in their own language. So the miracle of Pentecost is communication. The miracle of Pentecost is an open mind. The miracle of Pentecost is community of different people coming together with different lenses and different perspectives saying, hey, what you got? I got $2, I got $5, I got five one. I pause. <laughs> right? Say this with me, what you got? What you got? Because when we share the little that we have, something happens, it clicks. It's like Jesus says in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, you realize that, oh, I don't have to do this all by myself. I have help. Sometimes that help comes in different faces. Sometimes I'm not sure where it's going to come from, but you have to know that just as sure as you are sitting here, not only will it come, you will realize that it's been there the whole time. That's the one thing I like about the presence of God because it, it reveals, it's, it's a revealer. Jesus said that the presence of God, the presence of good, the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you, bring all things back to your remembrance. The book of Revelation, that wonderful title that a lot of us are afraid of, is all about revealing. So what is revealing? Revealing is peeling the layers off of what's already there. It's not about something new happening. It's like when a baby is about to be born and you have that big bridal shower, there's a revealing party. It didn't all of a sudden become a girl when they announced it, <laughs> right? It's a revealing party. So you allow life to form you and make you and mold you into the image of your truest self through your gifts and through your talents and through your unique quirks. Because I found that even with your unique quirks, the labels that they give us, ADHD, ASD, autism, they're just describing how our brain works. And so by leaning even into the way my brain works, more of God shines through me. Because guess what? I start accepting myself. I start loving myself and I realize that by me taking off the mask, I can't see, <laughs> taking off the mask and becoming more of who I am, my anxious self, my nervous self, my complete self, my babbling, my inability to register that you are not interested in what I'm saying, but I'm gonna go on and tell you what I'm saying for an hour as if you are, right? <laughs> who has those people in their life? <laughs> you ain't got to raise your hand all at once because it might be you. <laughs> we lean into our truest self, and guess what? You get taller. I'm oh, short, Joe Spurs. <laughs> you get taller. You grow stronger. You get bigger, for lack of a better word. And it happens because of this idea that we call spiritual formation. Now, many of you may not have heard it before, but if you've ever been through deep, deep psychological or, or theological training, you hear spiritual formation all the time. And there's just another word for school. It's another word to describe the process by which work gets done. And it's constructive work. Sometimes it feels good. Sometimes it hurts like a you-know-what. It's like, oh, I don't want to have that conversation. Oh, I don't want to think about that. Do not ask me this. And when people say this is off the record, I know deep down inside it's on the record somewhere, right? <laughs> so we hold back. But in this message, as we're exploring the theme of inner work under today's topic of spiritual formation, I'm going to ask you to do something on this week. Make one additional step. The areas in your life where you feel you've been holding back, you don't have to dive in head first. So some of us, we like the pain. Because I want to make mistakes and go ahead and get them out of the way. If that's you, then hear that. But for others, if you have to move incrementally through life, 
just know that God was with you. As the uh, elders used to say, go with God, go with God, go with God. In other words, go with inspiration and know you're going to be protected. Make that leap. You're going to be okay. Make that next step, that next journey. You'll be all right. Have that difficult conversation. Do it gently and don't expect a resolution at the end because sometimes a conversation is just to get the words out. Leave it there. Say this with me. Be patient. Be patient. Text message I got this morning. <laughs> I like to have it all and have it all right now. But even me, as an individual, Jesse, forget the minister, I am constantly being formed and being made into the image of who God called me to be and hopefully into the image of who my mom destined me to be, but I'll find out when I call her on Monday if I'm living up to it. But, yeah. <laughs> so we are constantly being formed in image, formed and reimagined. So my ask, my invitation this morning, this Pentecost Sunday, is to let it happen. When you feel changes in the swiftness of the presence of God moving through your life, and just to give it another term, when you feel the swiftness of inspiration come, just know that inspiration can come in the form of fight, flight, get out. It can come through that feeling. Intuition can come in the form of a gut instinct. But through the spiritual formative process of you just living life, incorporating all of your experiences, good, bad, or indifferent, what you learn isn't so much about life externally. You start to learn how life moves through you. You start to learn when, mm, I've had enough. You start to learn, mm, I'm overstimulated, I need a break. You start to learn, mm, I'm in my quiet phase. You start to learn all of these various things about you, and then they, believe it or not, have been the things in your life that have been the most positive because we overlook all of those other things. Right. And we don't realize that they have been positive influences in our life all along. So when you feel like your breath is about to be taken away, take another breath. Take a deep breath. When you feel things are getting weird, stay a little bit longer. Because through that process, you start to strengthen your inner self. And that's what that resolve comes in. That inner inner resilience that we talk about a lot. Post-traumatic stress becomes post-traumatic resiliency through the process of you being willing to say yes one more time. And for some of us, we have to say yes every day, and that's okay because life gets hard. Life gets confusing. But that is the inner work. It's the inner work, watch this, that's not just relegated inside. It's the inner work that we notice spills over on the outside. Or as the elders used to say way back when, something on the inside, working on the outside, brought about a change in my life. You can't explain it. You think it's this, but it's actually that. When the truth is, it's everything. So I don't know about you, but I would rather give it all to God within. Let it all go. Just take a deep breath and move out into life and see what happens. And you'd be surprised as to the miraculous that can happen in your life because you've allowed this inner working to happen. This inner working to happen. And that, my friends, is what spiritual formation truly is, if I can create a definition. Sometimes it happens one-on-one, -on -one, through people, through conversation with friends. Sometimes those conversations are good. Sometimes it's like, ah. Oh, I really hate that you bothered me today. Now I gotta sit with this. All of it's a part of the process, the good, the bad, the up and the down. But trust me, I'm just like you. I like to get away from the agitation. But when you calm down and you relax and everything settles and the dust clears and everything comes back full circle, you will learn that, hmm, I didn't enjoy those experiences, but they taught me something. They taught me about myself. They taught me about people. They taught me about the things in my world, how I like and why I like certain things, how and why I attach to certain things. Who's a very attachy kind of person? Psychology, somebody's like, no, nope, not me. I am not clingy like that. That's why I'm sitting in the back seat. Don't bother me. <laughs> there are a couple different attachment styles and then we'll move deeper to the message, but I want you to have this for your notes today. There is anxious attachment, which we talked about here. Anxious attachment is, hold me, hold me, don't let me go. 
I'm going to call you three times because I, I forgot something else. And then once I finish, I'm going to call you back because I remember something else. And then I'm going to send you 35 text messages, not because I'm a stalker, but because I don't want you to leave me because this feels too good. And then we have avoidant attachment. Avoidant attachment is, I love you, please go away. But don't go away too long, because if you go away too long, I'm gonna think you don't love me. Or, when I get quiet, it doesn't mean I want you to be quiet. I'm just quiet, because I'm in my head. But avoidant is how I protect myself. And I'm avoiding you in your presence and in my presence, because I love you. If I didn't like you, I would avoid you completely. But I'm avoiding you while you're here. So sit down, watch the movie, don't talk. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was just me. <laughs> I'm a talker. <laughs> That's how I show love. So I have anxious attachment. I latch on and I want to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And then we're gone, I'm going to text you and then talk and talk and talk and talk more. And then we have ambivalent attachment. Ambivalent as you move back and forth between the two. And that's kind of where life takes us. Life takes us through this ambivalency where, again, we are still being formed, although it does not feel like it, as the old folks used to say, God got its hand on me, right? I'm experiencing some things, but that ambivalency is next because it takes you out of the way you used to be. It rewires and restructures your brain so that you don't continue to approach life in the same way. Because here's the thing. Spiritual formation, the things that are in our life, person, places, and things are in our life because our brains and our bodies did certain things. But if you want new results, you got to do something different, Einstein. You can't do the same thing and expect a different result. So you do something different. Some of us need to just take a different route home. Instead of shaking hands with the right hand, shake hands with your left hand. Throw an ink pen in your left hand or do the old school study a technique where when you're listening to new information, stand on one leg, right? All of those things, NLP, <laughs> all of those things create this ambivalency where there's a level of necessary confusion in our life, right? We don't want confusion, but that necessary confusion, what we call normal stress, is just enough of stress and stuff to get us to move. And once we start moving, God starts moving with us. Intuition starts coming. And we discover the voice of intuition has always been there. It's been through, again, my gut instinct, my need to run away. It's been through my, I don't know why, I feel like I've known you forever. Because there's this shared familiarity. You don't look like me. We probably have not had friends who look like each other, but I feel like I've known you, that thing. You start to learn all of this stuff about you, and that is the stuff you launch out into the world, and it creates a beautiful, beautiful life. Even if you planted a rose and hydrangeas grow, it becomes a beautiful life because you start to learn it all eventually can be okay if I learn to trust. So in this message, I want you to hear it at whatever level you're on, wherever you are. If you're all the way there, go for it, go with God. It's not good nor bad, it's just where you are. If you're not quite there yet, take a micro step. But this is how we grow. Say this affirmation with me. This is how, this is how we, grow. we grow. And this is how we heal. I wanna point, you can say that too, this is how we heal. Because <laughs> those affirmations, they are powerful. These are things that we release, and I got a story to connect with that. I want to point your attention to the book of John. We're back in John again, John the second chapter. And John the second chapter, just to give you a bit of the history stuff, is a part of what they call the paratext. Because all these chapters and verses and all of that stuff, theologically speaking, in the original scripts, there's no chapters and verses. Those guys were just as ADHD as the rest of us. They just told one complete story and wrote it all down. Uh, Papyrus 66, found in Geneva, Switzerland, dated back to 80 to 95 AD, somewhere around the first century. But in that story, the Joannine community was sharing the writings of someone who was anonymous. And it was in the 13th century that we started attributing textual things like paragraphs and chapter titles and story titles so, to let us know what we're talking about here. And so if you look within the story itself, you'll find that there was a lot of stuff going on in that second chapter. But what I wanna focus your attention on is the story of the marriage in King of Galilee. John 
who we now classify as the writer of that text, is called in history the Beloved Disciple. And I want to tell you that title of Beloved Disciple, to be honest with you, even scholars, we're not even sure if that title appropriately applies to him. That title was no different than us saying our church is better than your church. Because actually, historically, all the John books in the New Testament go together. First John, second John, the book of Revelation, and also John in the New Testament. The writer of that script wasn't sure about the other, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, because none of the stories quite match up from those other ones. So if you ever read the New Testament and got confused, that's why. This writer decided to write his own story. And some of us who are scholars believe that the beloved disciple wasn't even John. It might have been Mary Magdalene because there's a feminine quality to the style of writing, even though it's written in Koine Greek, which is the language of the Roman Empire. But in the story itself, to get to my point, <clears throat> a marriage took place, and this is the first of what we call Jesus' signs, which are different than miracles. There were seven signs that Jesus demonstrated in order to show forth his divinity. One of the signs included power over nature, power over human life, power over supernatural life, and so on and so forth. And this, my friends, is what spiritual formation does. It doesn't just empower you in one area of your life. When you surrender to the presence of God within, you'd be surprised as to what you're good at. You think you're good at this, but then another gift pops up. You start playing the piano and you didn't even know you had a calling for it. You start talking to people more and you didn't realize you were a people person, even though you were an introvert. All of these things come about through spiritual formation. But in the story, this was Jesus' first major sign. The marriage that took place was located in Cana. Everybody say Cana. Cana etymologically means reeds. And if you need to place it at a point in the body, like Charles Fillmore, place your hand on your throat. Because the larynx area of the throat, when you look at it, has a reed-like quality to it. So this entire story, this entire experience, Pentecost, all of it is all about deep, deep communication. Because during the process of spiritual formation, when you feel you're at a point to start talking about things and talking about your life, there are things you're going to say and watch out world because you're going to start creating a life that works for you in a way that it has never worked before because the stuff that you have been through on the inside is now spilling over to the outside. And so with the actual marriage, back in the story, two people got married. We say scholastically it might have been Nathaniel's wedding because we see Mary, Jesus's mom, in charge saying, hey, do this, do that. Jesus, don't you know we're out of wine? But it could have also been Jesus and Mary Magdalene or Mary's cousin. I'll leave you as the readers to decide who it actually was that was getting married. But the main point was that a miracle took place and the miracle was the changing of the water into wine. On one level, that entire story is symbolic of the renewal and resurgence of the presence and the power of God that was happening in the Jewish community because Jesus took ceremonial pots that were filled with water and converted them to wine for history buffs. But for us, this story is symbolic of the renewal and the formative nature of the power of God that happens in our life on a day-to-day -day basis when we say yes. In other words, you'd be surprised as to the parts of you that God can use when you surrender it to the power of God within. When you let go and say yes, the things that you've thrown away, the people that you've thrown away, the conversations you've forgotten about, can become the very core things that shape and mold your personality to help you make your world beautiful. And so with me, take a big, deep breath. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Y'all know we're a unity church, right? So there's some deep metaphysics in that story. For the sake of time, I'll give you some. Breathing is a very powerful act, and you learn through spiritual formation that the presence of God moves through us through our breath as discovered by the meditators on um, last week and also this morning. But breathing takes you into the experiential nature of that story because every time you breathe, water becomes wine. You ever heard of the phrase blue bloods? You look at your legs and you see the blue veins in your legs. Blood isn't actually blue. You know, there's hemoglobin and carries the iron and all of that stuff. But the blue water becomes the red blood when oxygen hits it every time we take that big deep breath. And this happens all the time. So metaphorically, every time we take a deep breath and oxygenate our blood, we experience that changing of the water to wine. How do you use this? Every time you get nervous, change the watery nature of thought into the powerful, dynamic, 
uh, element of feeling. And on a physical level, every time you take a deep breath and bring more oxygen into your blood through that process that happens in the body, guess what happens? You can move a bit more. Your muscles loosen up. You're not as stiff. So I want you to hear in this message, keep breathing, keep living, keep trying, even though it may not work out right the first time. And when you do that, I promise you, the presence of God within will change things in your life. And a marriage happens. You know what that marriage is? That marriage is all the pieces in your life that are separate. They start to come together. And then everything makes sense. So for the things you can't figure out, the things you don't know, no answers are going to come in time. They may not come through other people. They may not come through things. It might be a private conversation that you and Spirit had, but through the process of deep breathing and relaxing into who I am in divine love, everything in my life gets repurposed and changed for the better. Thank you for listening. Peace and blessings. For those of you that were touched and inspired by this message of spiritual formation, remember to log on to unitybehemp.org and click on giving. For those that are in-house, our ushers are making their way forward to collect the offering. And Adonis will give us an instrument. your hands in the direction of our ushers. Say this with me. We bless this offering. We bless this offering. Knowing it will be used will be for the used building of this ministry. Of this we bless the givers. We, bless the givers. we declare, we declare their, gifts their gifts will return back to them back to with, good measure, with good measure pressed down, press down shaking together, shaking together and running over. And, running. and so it is. So it is. Put your hands together for yourself. All stand for let there be peace on earth.
light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever I am, God is. And all is well. Thank <laughs> you.